fucking woman took my card and made all these withdrawals. 200, 200, 200. Look at all the fucking withdrawals she did with my card. She stole from my fucking card, man. Look what the fuck she was taking money out of my social security. This fucking woman. Unbelievable. No. Look what all she's doing. She was just cashing out my card. All these Remsies, 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 Harlem Gourmet. She just went to fucking town with my fucking card, man. That this is all I have left to my fucking card. Yeah. This is this is <laughs> she She just robbed me of my fucking card. I couldn't find my card nowhere. Look at this woman. This is the woman who stole my social security card and was making withdrawals so she could buy fucking crack. I'm fucking sick. I was in the hospital. My diabetes was so fucking out of control because Goddard downtown refused to deliver my fucking medicine for my heart medication and my insulin. And this woman was fucking literally robbing me of my social security. She literally tried to commit suicide popping pills and tried to set herself on fire in the apartment not only causing a danger to herself and myself, but the rest of the building at 444 Amsterdam Avenue. I'm sorry, 444 163rd Street between Amsterdam and Edgecombe, apartment 702. This woman is a fucking thief, a crackhead fucking thief who thinks nothing of robbing people that she claims to be taken care of. She's literally robbing me blind. This woman is an EDP. A violent EDP. Who in the other video that I posted had no problem pulling out knives to prevent me from leaving the apartment when I wanted to go to the hospital. Fucking crackhead. And I also apologize to him for it, but it's not good enough. Okay? Oh, okay. So, he wanted me He wanted me to watch him have a massive uh, coronary heart attack. He wanted to kill himself that way. This but woman was putting me in medical threat. So, I said, I'm going to put up all on myself. Set myself on fire. Let's see. Let, let him watch me burn. While at the same time robbing me okay, blind with my fucking social space. security. And that's all I got to say. So, if there's no more recording after this, that means we, we both dead motherfuckers in this, in this place. This is a woman who seriously needs to be placed in psychiatric care, protective custody. Because she goes into these suicide issues, and she admits it. She has no self. She's a threat to herself, and really needs to be placed in protective custody. She seriously needs to be placed in protective custody, because from my experience with her. She has shown a propensity to not only try to use violence against herself, against others. She's done it to me numerous times. And you see it in the video that she has no qualms about harming people. She was a client of CUCS. And 
at one point she'll come off as normal as hell. But once you start getting to know this person, you'll start realizing that she becomes unhinged when she feels that something is a threat to her or she'll imagine shit and have delusions where she'll think that people are doing things to her and she'll go into this behavior, this, this, this craziness. And it's amazing how there's nobody watching her because this is a multiple uh, uh, unit apartment building that she's living in on apartment 702 at 444 West 163rd Street. And she moved in there and she's exhibiting this type of behavior where she'll steal from you, she'll use violence against you. She's violent. She's extremely violent. You see this. She just counted her Saraquil. She took, she tried to take a whole bunch of pills. When I called her son and tried to notify him, all he said was just have her committed. Like it was just really no empathy that his mother was trying to literally commit suicide. You know, this, this whole situation really, really needs to be examined carefully because I had to part ways with her because of the fact that she was stealing from me. I slept on the floor because I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, Goddard fucked me over. She was literally holding me hostage there because she would like steal shit that was important. Like my social security was gone. I couldn't find it and she would just deny it. My jewelry was gone. My ID was gone. So I had no way of recovering anything. So if I had tried to report this situation, I would have been in a situation where I would have no ID, no social security, no nothing. I just recovered my card. And I find out that all these deposits were being, these, 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 these amounts were being removed from my car. And I had been in bed all this time, except for when the point that I had to go to the ER with almost 600, 700 level on my social security. And this woman the whole time was just robbing me blind, literally. She had money on her and I'm asking her where she's gotten this money. And she'd be like, oh, I won the lottery because I see her playing scratch off. She got real lucky all of a sudden playing lottery. So she was just spending money on drugs and my, and, and I'm like, yo, what the fuck, man? You know, like, you, I know you didn't get that money like that because when she has her own money, she's extremely stingy. She's extremely fucking selfish. She won't spend a fucking dime for anybody, for you, for nobody. She'll want to fucking cash out on your fucking money. Now all of a sudden she was just buying shit, buying shit, buying shit. And she was real great friends with the fucking drug dealers all of a sudden because they were calling the house. She'd call them, they'd message her. And I'm like, yo, what do you got going on over here? And I told her when she moved there, I said, yo, what the hell? You can't be coming here and making yourself like, like you know these people. You're from Harlem. You're, you're in fucking Washington Heights. This is a whole different world. All of a sudden, she's carrying on like, you know, like she's a party girl. And this was the same shit she was doing at the YMCA. And when I left CUCS, I know for a fact this is the way she was carrying on there as well. She is somebody that really needs to be in a structured environment where somebody, you know, is like really looking at her in an, in, in an environment where, you know, they're watching her because she's going to get herself into trouble. That, that's what's going to happen. Because she literally stole from me like it wasn't nothing to her. And what needs to be taken into consideration is that if she, God forbid, does that with the wrong person, any danger can come about. She's not only a danger to herself, but she's a danger to people around her. But she cannot keep doing what she's doing because eventually somebody's going to, you know, cash in and they're going to take advantage of her because she is trusting. She is open to 
you know, things that normal people, normal women, she's out at 3.30 in the morning meeting at fucking street corners with drug dealers, and she's like, she doesn't think anything wrong of it. Oh, I'm going to the store. And she's constantly drinking, constantly. You'll see her. Amsterdam and 163rd. Her caseworker at this facility, his name is Sharice. Okay, they have her on camera at all times of the day, going in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. And it's like, I don't understand how they have not taken a notice of this because while I was staying there, you know, they let me stay there because obviously she was telling them I was like her fiance, or whatever. And I would, you know, I'd be like, why are you telling people that? I'm your friend. I'm, 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 I'm somebody that, you know, I'm trying to look up to this woman so that she wouldn't get in trouble. And all she's doing is fucking me, you know, like, you know, what the fuck? You're stealing from me, the person who's fucking by your side. So it's obviously she has some problem neurologically of cognizance of, of decision making that she's not able to decide between right and wrong decisions. And like, I give up, man, because I had to, I had to, I had to just really get away from the situation. Because when you start inviting people, elements from the street, involved in your life when I'm trying to show you the right way to live your life and you're telling me that it's more important for you to betray me for them, that's when you have to step out and just go, listen, I'm sorry, I can't do this anymore. I can't, you know, because when you make me your enemy for people on the street and drug dealers on the street, there's obviously an issue that you need to really start addressing for yourself because I'm not going to sit there and keep putting myself in line to protect you when you're sitting there content, just putting yourself in danger on purpose. And now that I find out that she was literally had possession of my social security card and was just making withdrawals and withdrawals and withdrawals of $275 and you're fucking just like, you have no conscience whatsoever of who you're doing that to then it's obvious, you know, I can't deal with you anymore. And it's obvious that you really need some serious assessment. You need to see a psych assessment. And Dr. Jeffries over at 145th Street at that medical office really needs to take a look at this and see that you really need to be institutionalized. I'm sorry. And I'm not saying that to be mean or revengeful, but I fear for your safety. And it's important that somebody reach out to protect you because I'm somebody who cared for you on, on multiple levels. You're a beautiful person when you're on your normal side, but when you get into this situation where you, you slip into this mode here, you know, I, I, I have to step back and pray for you because you're obviously out of control and need some sort of supervision.